Hey everyone, and we're live. Uh, glad you could join us this evening. I think what we have tonight is a <clears throat> a really cool episode of the Ghosts of Bacon. Um, I'm your host, Jake Roberts, and uh, I see a lot of people popping in live already. Great to see a lot of familiar faces, gang, or names, I guess. I'm not really seeing your faces, am I? <laughs> so, hey, Curtis, good to see you, man. Um, so, Tonight, uh, what we have on tap is uh, Jason Mercer is is going to be joining me here, popping on the screen here pretty quick, and um, we're going to be really digging in deep. Uh, the map that I posted uh, in our group and, and also uh, with uh, the, the latest promo uh, message that I sent. Hey, good evening, Penny. Thank you for joining. Hey, Ray. Good to see you. So... Um, we're going to be really looking at this closely, uh, this uh, map from a Nicholas Van Sype. Uh, I have contended that he, well, that Bacon drew this map, as you all probably have already surmised. And what was cool was that um, uh, uh, Daniel Spino, good to see you, man. Um, uh, speak of the devil. Uh, when I had posted the original um uh, uh, picture of the name Drake with the misspelling. Um, <clears throat> Daniel, of course, immediately sourced out the actual map and posted that. And then, of course, as soon as Jason uh, got his hands on it, uh, everything really, uh, he started to um, really kind of uh, unravel a bunch of stuff that I had found as well. And he, he shared it on uh, our, our Ghosts of Bacon uh, group. And so I invited him on to so that we could uh, compare notes. Uh, he has been working on this independently. Uh, I've been working on it independently. And so we're, we're, we want to see how things kind of line up when we start comparing all of our finds. So everyone, uh, please welcome Jason to hey, the podcast. Hey. Good to see you again, my friend. It was nice visiting you here before show. Um, always a pleasure and always a lot of fun when uh, someone else actually uh, joins in my nerdiness. And yeah. So, thanks, uh, thanks. Well, you know, uh, like I said last time you, you, you came on the show, uh, my friend, it's like I just really, really get a great deal of satisfaction seeing all of the stuff that you're finding and, and all of the really cool work you're doing um, and, and how it, um, well, in a, in a very real sense, it kind of validates, you know, what I've been doing and, and trying to, uh, you know, shouting out the window, so to speak of, hey, look, you, you, everyone really has to take a closer look at some of this stuff. And so um, what we wanted to do tonight is, uh, Jason, you, do you want to talk about your process and what you ended up do, doing with the map? And then I'll talk about what I did with the map, and we'll just kind of compare notes. What do you think? Yeah, sure. sure. I got four quick photos, and um, I'll just run through it because um, I'm sure there's a lot we'll talk about tonight. It'll make up at least an hour. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Daniel, you know, I'm serious when I put on my reading glasses. That's right. <laughs> my, my, my cheaters. <laughs> Hi, Linda. Glad you could join us from Nova Scotia. Very cool. No worries. You're not late at all. Um, someone said, sorry, they're late. Uh, yeah, everyone, uh, if you are a Facebook user, uh, if you go to StreamYard.com uh, and, and you can put in your information there, your name will actually appear up here live on our chat uh and uh, as well as on the youtube side um be, otherwise if you're on the facebook side of things it just says facebook user so all right jason uh want me to go ahead and uh you know go ahead and share the screen and put you up there and you can take it away and show us what you found all right just put myself on mute here are you looking at this one here Great. Yeah, so you posted a question and uh, if there was a cipher message in the name Drake, you know, with the H, D-R-A-C-H. Um, of course, you got my attention, Daniel's attention, some other people's attention in our group. And um, we had to go digging for this map because you weren't sharing it, right? So. 
<laughs> so uh, some of us found a map and uh, wow, it's got bacon all over it. Um, indeed, indeed. So, um, you know, for those that probably saw um, my interview with you uh, October, um, it's the same process. So I'm going corner to corner um, on the artwork and it's producing um, isosceles triangles above and below and left and right. And those isosceles triangles are producing angles from the corners and then different angles at the center of the X. So this, these angles are then producing a rectangle, rectangle at a height to width ratio that the artist wants. And once the artist has that height to width ratio, um, then they begin to uh, place these things over this blueprint and um, they're, they're able to draw over it with accuracy. Right. So we're going to look at some of that accuracy tonight and um, using your, your book as a reference, Jake, um, I continue to use uh, the Appendix A and, and, and using that to uh, cipher these messages and um, also the uh, simple cipher, the reverse cipher and K cipher um, to put some context to what these numbers mean that we're going to see tonight. So, um, so looking at this picture here, the, the red line corner to corner is at 28 degrees, which is also the uh, simple cipher value of the word arc, A-R-K. Um, the center angle is 124 degrees. Um, and so you have 28, 124 and 28 make up this isosceles triangle at the top and at the bottom. Um, now on the left and right, you have isosceles triangles at 62 degrees and 56 um, in the center at the, at the X. So adding the left and right angles, 56 and 56 is 112. And right off the bat, that produces a reverse cipher message uh, that totals Mary Stewart, the name Mary right. Stewart. Excellent. Okay. So also um, just leaving a signature on this red X, if you go from the, uh, the top left corner, as you come down through the date of uh, the 26th of September, 1580, I don't know if you can see my mouse, the arrow here, um, but it comes through the, the number two and six, and it just catches the bottom of the S in September. Right. Uh, September was the seventh month, and uh, the the word sept uh, means seven. Yeah. So Absolutely. if you add twenty six and seven, you have thirty three, which in simple cipher is bacon, B-A-C-O-N. So then I have the purple lines because there's another rectangle inside the rectangle. And so if you, if you take the uh, header with the words on the top and the words on the bottom, and you look at the rectangle just inside of that, it puts it at a slightly smaller angle of um, 27.5 degrees instead of the 28 degrees. The 27.5 is a number I'm familiar with um, because that produces at the center, the angle 125, which I have found to be Francis Bacon DAV, the abbreviation for Dauphin of France. So, yeah. He has two X's with two rectangles um, on this map with two messages right there, um, which is really getting exciting and, and that's just getting started. So 
Yeah, um, you're you're one line going down from uh, the upper left. Mm -hmm. as the green line um, is also very interesting. I have the same one. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does some cool things, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. This is great. Yeah, loving it. I'm loving it. So from that top corner on the left, the green line now is showing uh, 33 degrees that passes through the crown of the portrait. Uh, to the last letter of the H in Drake. And um, at 33 degrees, um, it's also going through the word Shalal. And I'll, I'll get to that word again later as it intersects a second time. Um, now, the other green line from the top right-hand corner um, is 67 degrees. And that is going to the first letter of Drake, the D. So just in simple cipher, the angle of 33 is Bacon. And now the 67 degree is Francis. And so he's put it right on the name Drake um, to share with us that, hey, I, I'm, I'm wrote this map here, not, not Drake. Right. So... Um, the value of Drake was, was also interesting, um, which was, you know, 33 and, um, yep. I think I found something else. Oh yes. Drake is also the total of 137 in K cipher for right. FR the third. So Francis the third, which his father was Francis the second, King of France, which would have made him Francis the third, King of France and King of Scotland. Checking all the boxes, man. Keep going. This is great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's go to picture number two. So zooming in on the portrait, um, you call this the, the meridian lines that, that gauge and have numbers uh, up and down and left mm -hmm. and right. So using the meridian at 33 down and 33 to the right um, puts an intersection in the portrait. <laughs> and again, also crosses over the crown of the head of Bacon. So he's, here he is saying Bacon again. And he's, he's said it multiple times already. Right. All right. So this gets a lot more exciting and I'll, I'll get into what each one of these angles mean. So looking at the blue lines, the blue lines are ascending from the bottom and it's covered now, but it's a D, the letter D. So the first line is at 81 degrees. And 81 is Francois in simple cipher. Um, and that name is also going up to the top to Drake. Now, the second line is 75 degrees. And 75 in reverse cipher is the last name Stuart. Um, in re it also in reverse cipher means Francis the uh, third. 75 degrees also stops at the top in the A between the D and the V. And DAV is short for Dauphin, again saying he's the Dauphin of France. Great. Now, stuff. Moving over to 67 degrees, this goes through the face of the portrait <clears throat> and 67 is simple cipher for Francis. Now, this line is going through a picture or drawing of a dolphin just underneath the name or the, the spelling of the word circuit. So, Again, he's saying Francis and he's the dolphin. 
Um, I found something interesting with this word. Um, the, it lands on a Q. So if you take the value of the letter on the left and the letter of the right, the RQV total 53. And 53 in simple cipher is Mary. Um, so I think he's making a reference to his mother. Um, and so it's, he's saying Q, Mary with the three letters there, Queen Mary. So good. Um, the good total, <laughs> the like total that. of the word circuit is 171 and 171 is Francis in K cipher. So there's a lot going on on that line. Um, now the next line over is 53. And again, 53 is simple cipher for Mary. So this line starts at the bottom and it ascends towards the top and then halfway here, it hits the letter A and then it ends on the letter R. And we talked about this in the previous podcast. Right. Um, D-A-R is dar and it's the Hebrew word for mother. So he's saying, this is my mother, Mary, at 53 degrees. And that yeah. is still in the portrait. Right. And then um, you got a few questions popping up here. Uh, Jason, yeah. Real quick. I'm going to throw them up here on the screen. First one is Facebook user says, what, Mary, are you kidding? Um, <laughs> so, uh, must be someone who's uh, fairly new to my work. But um, right. that, that was one of the messages of, of the plaque that adorns uh, Shakespeare's funerary monument. Those of you who are just joining us for the first time, one of the major messages of that cipher system uh, basically spells out who Sir Francis Bacon's true parents were. And uh, he states explicitly that his his mother was Mary Queen of Scots and his father was Francis II of France. So, um, nope, not kidding. <laughs> yes, not kidding. And in all of my work, looking at uh, Bacon-related artwork, it's the same messages, a lot of times in the same angles yep. and using the same numbers. Um, and uh, the art's always a little bit different. Um, but but the message the this, message, this message is consistent. And so, uh, yeah, awesome, Jason. Thank you. Uh, Jenny, uh, Jenny's getting angry with it. She wants to know how was it determined where the lines would go? Great question, Jenny, as usual. So I'll, you, you can talk about your process. And then uh, when I do mine, I'll explain how I came up with it, Jenny. Go, go ahead, Jason. How did, well, how early you? on, I, I didn't know what numbers and angles to look for. The process for myself is getting faster because these are constantly used in bacon related artwork. Mm -hmm. So now I'm, I'm always looking for 75, 67, 53, 45, 33, 25, 21, 28, um, 12. It, it's those are just like the ones you want to get started with. And then you want to start going through and looking for clues uh, that would lead you on other ones. And you know, looking at this portrait, um, all these lines are, are going through the portrait. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there's kind of a window there where he's making he's making a message uh, through the portrait. Right. So, right. Um, David Spino just had a great um, observation. He says where those lines meet in the center look like it's close to St. Helena, where Edmund Haley had his observatory. Cool observation, Daniel. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, Jason, great stuff. Uh, keep going. Yeah, so there's one more line on here that does not go through the portrait. Um, and certainly at this point, it doesn't need to be. Um, oh, let me let me finish on 45 degrees uh, because it passes through the scale on the meridian line. 
and that line is at 100. So 45 is James in simple cipher. This would be uh, a reference to King James, the future King James, uh, Francis's half brother. So uh, the line passes through the 100 on the map and 100 in simple cipher equals Stuart, the family name, English um, spelling, yes. and it and it all it also references the full name Francis Bacon, thirty three and sixty seven together, um, and then just kind of a I don't know if it was meant to, but because they're brothers or half brothers, this forty five degree also touches the the. Uh, Francis line in green on 67. So James and Francis are together um, off to the side here. That's cool. So just below that, we have 33 uh, again for bacon. And the interesting thing about the bacon line is um, it's passing through um, on the map at 153. It's just, you can see 150 and it's just crossing through 153. And uh, your book as a quick reference <laughs> to some of these ciphers that you've already done is King Francis or King Francois the third in reverse cipher. Um, That's right. That's so right. that was, or sorry. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. King Bacon is 153 in reverse cipher. And I, I've got something else to get to just below here that, that's going to that's gonna match that up, and I'll be done with this photo. Awesome. Yeah, uh, 153 is also I Rex Francis Bacon as well as I Sir Francis Bacon. And, okay. Uh, Awoken One wants to know, uh, has any AI technology ever been used to decipher Francis Bacon or suspected Francis Bacon artworks? No, not that I'm aware of. It, I, it I think what we're doing is very new. And of course, yeah. the message that we're repeating because we're reading it through the art is very new and probably exactly. not accepted by everybody. Um, <laughs> so, sure. but I, I'm just reading the messages. I'm not, I, I'm not deciding Amen. who's who here. Right. Same here. So, so the, the other interesting thing with that 33 degree line is it intersects the green 33 degree line uh, through the crown of Francis in the portrait um, at the letter S and S and at bash is also G. But um, um, that produces new angles. So with the 33 angle and 33 angle coming together and across uh, that produces an angle at the center of 114. So if you take both the top and the bottom angles of 114 and add them together, that's 228, which is King Francois the third in reverse cipher. <laughs> so it's just, it's just more redundancy that, you know, his name's all over this map. Um, and if you look at the angle next to that is 73.5 and 73.5, um, that totals 147. And that is also King Francois the third and simple cipher. Right. So the, the interesting thing with 33 degrees passing through 33, um, produces the same message in, in, in simple cipher and in reverse cipher with the, the numerical values. Um, so that's, that's all I had uh, on that particular photo there. Um, I'm gonna move here to the last photo. And this gets exciting for me because of what it's showing geographically over Nova Scotia. And so <laughs> let, me, let me describe this. Um, so we have the same lines here, um, but I do have this purple line. 
And I didn't mention that on the right side. So maybe I'll, I'll go back to it really quick. Um, but this purple line is at 21 degrees or 777. Um, they're running this line at 21 degrees. Now I moved that line down to where I thought it was hitting uh, Oak Island. Um, okay. And okay. I see 21 degrees used in other artwork. So I thought it would be significant. And then when I laid the other two numbers over it, it created an intersection over Mahone Bay. So, <laughs> so um, the, again, the 75 degrees from the bottom on the left side is going over Nova Scotia. And then I started playing with angles that were continuously used from the top center and 53 degrees, again, Mary, uh, crosses over the same intersection. Um, and then I started looking at the numbers of the angles that were created when 75 and 21 intersect themselves. Okay. And the, the large degree there is 126 and the smaller degree on the other side um, is 54. So right. if we look at those numbers, um, 54 is ARC, A-R-K, in K cipher at 27, 17, and the letter K at 10. So, so the, the overall map is done in the angle of 28 for ARC, and this intersection is also at arc at 54 degrees. Um, I also took 54 because there's 54 on the opposite side. So I, I added it together and I've got 108. And then that produces the name Francis in reverse cipher. So right. 54 and 54 is 108 Francis in reverse cipher. Right. Um, <laughs> That's yeah, really just very exciting. That is. Now, one more thing with the purple line here, and, and I'm, I'll, I'll pass it over here. The, um, let's see. Let me look at my notes here real quick. Well, I had something. We'll come back to it, but it's it's these lines are passing through the meridian uh, at very specific points. So mm -hmm. the, uh, the the fifty three degree line um, is passing through the meridian uh, at a significant place, and um, the 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 blue line is passing through a significant place. Um, but I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Okay. No, this is great. I mean, it's, again, it, it, you're going to see it's, you know, echoing what I found too. Great job, Jason. Good work. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> Jay. No, that's impressive. Uh, and so throwing up a couple of uh, questions here. Um, let me do that. Tom wants to know the font size looks like it changes on the top of the map in the word Drake. Is that on purpose? Yep. I, I, don't you think so? I, 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 yeah, I definitely believe so. Yes. And you, you agree? Yeah. It looks funny too. When you look at uh, the word was the divorce and uh, it, the D a V stands out the space yeah. between the V and the O are a little wide and it's just things to look for. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I mean, in any time, um, and those of you who are familiar with my work know, but if you're not, um, when you see a variation uh, in, in, in anything, whether it's the size of a font or, or uh, where they decide to break a word, you're going to see in, in the images that I show, 
Um, they, they're significant. They're, they're important choices. Um, another Facebook user, Jake, I've said once, I will say it again. I see it symbolically. You both see it in Cypher. These numbers and themes continue to be repeatable over and over again. Absolutely. Mediums may change. Methodologies methodologies may change. But the Esoterica and family links continue to stay the same. Hidden in yeah. sight. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can get it. And yeah, uh, Cortland Dahl and I have had many a discussion on the repeatability of the ongoing themes. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Court and I have talked about that as well. Um, so it, it's it's definitely there for sure. Yeah. Hey, Jake, one thing I think I did forget to mention. Sure. Um, the the purple X from corner to corner that I had yeah. uh, with the center of 125 degrees. That is the same exact ratio, height to width ratio as the Shakespeare funerary plaque. Yes. So that yes, comes yes. that I know that comes way later in a timeline because we know the date of this map for sure. That's right. But that is a familiar height to weight ratio to get a familiar message of 125 yep. Dolphin Francis Bacon in the center. Correct. Absolutely correct. Yes. Great job. Yeah, I, I, I see that too. Um, uh, Facebook user. So are we linking Bacon to Oak Island? Yes. Uh, my, my particular Oak Island theory that uh, I presented uh, to the war room um, specifically places Bacon on Oak Island, actually. So uh, hopefully I can share that presentation with you at a later date <laughs> in its entirety. Um, Tom Burns, you got it, man. Repeatable results is where it's at, and that's what we're going to see. Uh, Facebook user, oh, Ark is in the covenant. Um, well, I, I'm of the mindset that uh, Bacon created his own Ark, uh, frankly, that, that he kept his uh, papers in the first folio of Shakespeare uh, and, and a few other things. Um, but I not, not all people agree with me that a lot of people believe yeah. it. Maybe the arc of arc. I know, I know uh, uh, Peter Amundsen, uh, when I spoke with him, that, you know, he he was of the mind that the Ark of the Covenant would, was um, what's going on there. So the only um, thing I can say to that at this point, and it's not not trying to make up anything that I can't see, um, but there is a story that reflects the same story of Moses, where Moses's mother puts him in an ark and sends him down the river for his own yes. safety. That's right. Um, and for some reason, uh, Mary queen of Scots had this baby and she had to send him away mm -hmm. in a hypothetical arc uh, for safety. So that's one of the relationships that I see using the word arc um, yep. because there's, there's at least three different arcs in the Bible. Um, and, and Francis, for many reasons, knew the the Bible forward and backwards. So absolutely. Well, when he rewrote it for James for his yeah. version, you know, um, yeah. And Daniel Spano, awesome stuff as usual, Jason. Uh, very true, Daniel. Thank you, um, Penny Rogers. Good presentation. Um, and oops, wrong one. Uh, Daniel, uh, yeah, the, the map is posted. Um, I, I, I used it uh, today uh, with the link uh, for the show. So, so um, <laughs> Awoken one, another great cover. You guys lost me the moment the word Cypheat was mentioned, but was it Cypher? <laughs> Maybe you woke one, but I'm astonished at how you guys are able to smash this by decoding it all. Thanks, man. Um, I'm, let me uh, go ahead and, uh, Jason, if you want to uh, stop sharing your screen, hit the uh, button there, and I'll go ahead and I'll share what I okay. found. Um, and so what I'm going to do is uh, let me cross off a couple of things that you already mentioned because <laughs> um, we, we do have overlap as usual. Uh, oh, John Edwards, hey. All right. If we are lo linking... Um, Bacon to Oak Island, are we saying manuscripts stored in liquid mercury, which would be very comical now, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Yes, it would, my friend. Um, I do believe that that's exactly what was going on there for sure. Uh, and like I said, at a, at a later date, um, 
uh, hopefully we'll be able to um, actually share uh, that information that I shared with the guys on Oak Island. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Jenny, uh, actually, just so uh, Deidre White, uh, everyone, if you haven't checked out uh, the White's podcast uh, called Could It Be podcast, um, it's really they, they do a great job. Um, they're a lot of fun, very fun people. Nice couple. Um, and Jenny's asking, Deidre, could it be um, an Oak Island podcast might be right? Just the wrong arc. LOL. She joked it was Noah's arc. Um, it's funny you say that, Jenny, because um, the presentation I did on the illustrated uh, or the, the uh, Invisible College illustration uh, actually depicts the arc uh, of Noah's arc uh, in the upper left hand corner. And it's also uh, a pictorial cipher that actually spells out, it uses the picture of the arc, and then next to it are the letters ADI, Arcady. So it's, it's really pretty cool. So um, it also, Arco means um, in Latin means protect or keep hidden. So that, and when Jason just said that about, um, Mary's son, um, he was kept hidden. He, he was a state secret for sure. Very cool. All right. Um, let's see what I can do here. I have my notes. I didn't do the uh, dog and pony show uh, presentation that I normally do. I'm just going to be showing um, pictures. And so let me move on to the next picture here. Here you see the D-R-A-C-H that I posted originally. And as Jason pointed out, um, when you add them up in simple cipher, it's 33, which is bacon in simple cipher. Uh, when you add them up in reverse cipher, you get 92, which is, uh, again, bacon in uh, reverse cipher. And the, uh, as he said, um, the K cipher value of D-R-A-C-H is 137, uh, which is the 33rd prime number. It's also uh, the value of Dauphin Francis. So. What I did was, I, starting in the upper right-hand corners, I, I drew a line at 33 degrees and one at 67 degrees on both sides. And so the 33 degrees points right at the H in, um, in of uh, Drake, or Drake, the way it's spelled here. And <clears throat> the 33, or excuse me, 67 degree line pointing down points the R here. Um, so I'm going to jump into it. When we look at um, this crossing point right here, they cross right at 19. Okay, so 19 degrees, that's the tau, not the letter T. But it's also the 19th prime number is 67, which is oh, Francis. That's, right. that's okay. awesome. Isn't that cool? Yeah, so, that is cool. Um, so we keep going, and what we're going to do is as we go up here, Notice how it crosses the I above Nubia. All right. So we have 33, 33 crossing the letter I as saying I bacon. Um, but looking at my notes here, um, it also crosses the meridian right at 33, um, which I thought was really pretty cool. So you have the, the, um, the angle of 33 crossing uh, the equator at 33 degrees. Uh, or very close to it. So um, the 67 um, degrees line, I'm going to move this up here. Actually, oop. hopefully you're not getting too sick there. Passes right through this V. Um, and so when we go through down here, what it does is it passes through the R and C. So it's saying Rosie Cross, R, C. C and Nicola and R and Drake. Um, so if we look here at the spelling of his last name, Sipe, notice that there's an F after it. So if we add those up in simple cipher, S-Y-P-E-F is actually um, 67 in simple cipher. When we add it up in reverse, it's 58, which is Shakespeare. In short cipher, Elizabethan short cipher, and the K value of S Y P E F is actually 119, which Jason had mentioned is Francois in reverse cipher. One thing I'm going to point out right here is just a little pictorial cipher, the number 37. These mountains, 
when you look at them on the side are actually the number 37. You can see it right there. Now, um, 37 is the value of the name Drake, as well as F-R-A-N, both in simple cipher, the, the uh, abbreviation of the name Francis. So moving on, if we look from the lines uh, left and right here, let me, oops. So one of the things that I did was I used the numbers, um, let's see, 33 and then 37. And then we have 55, which is uh, Francis Bacon in uh, Elizabethan short cipher, as well as the number 67. And as I said, you know, you look here um, where they cross. And if... If you look at a lot of uh, images like Jason was mentioning uh, from, from this era, what you find is you'll have a sun and a moon in the upper right-hand corners shining down. And so what we have here are hints of what to do when you see one of these, these images. And so here you see this pattern that develops right along the meridian. And you also see this line going down here. Um, if we zoom in on the portrait Jason had mentioned, he has a lot of significant lines coming from the center. What I did was I went from the corners. And so if we just go here and look at this portrait, notice how this line crosses this T. All right, so we have leftover letters. Uh, one of the things that I've discovered uh, with these types of cipher messages is that when a line, when you draw these significant lines at significant angles and you have a line that crosses a number, uh, what happens is, or a letter, uh, you cross that one off and then you total the values of the ones that remain. And so if you add up, this is really cool, A-T-A-S-V-E-4, and notice that's not a two. It's supposed to be a two, but it isn't. It's a Z. And so um, that means there, that meant to me that there was a message here. And adding that up in simple cipher, it totals 92, which is Bacon in reverse cipher. Um, when you do it in reverse, it's 108, which is Francis in reverse cipher. And then if you total them up in K cipher, they total 196, which is not related to Francis Bacon at all. However, it's actually Francis Drake in K cipher or excuse me, reverse cipher. So I thought that was really, really pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And then looking right here next to it, notice how um, we have 10, 20, and that's supposed to be 30, but it says 50. Does everyone see that? That's not a three, that's a five. But what does it do? It Both of these lines cross at number 57 when you count down here. Uh, 57, of course, is the triple tau. Uh, T, 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 uh, at that value in, in fourfold cipher is 67. Um, and it's uh, 57 is, is like I said, the triple tau. And that was uh, Bacon's, one of Bacon's uh, signatures he used. So as we look at um, next, let's look at the lines coming up from the bottom corners and notice how they interact with the, with the words above. Now, um, uh, Tom, I think that you were the one who asked the question, you know, um, you know, is this significant that the letters are, are different size? Absolutely. And here you're going to see something that's really, <laughs> this is pretty cool, um, in the same area that um, uh, Jason had mentioned about uh, the value of Mary. Um, so right here, using this, this type of uh, system, we zoom in here and we see the words Prince F. Prince Francis. And so uh, it also says, I see T. I see the Tao. Tao is a symbol of truth. Um, so he's saying, I see the truth. Um, and then when we look at the letters, A, I, C, T, P, they total 47, which is Mary in simple cipher. And right here we have um, this acrostic anagram, P-A-R-E-N-T, Mary Parent. Ha, huh, that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd like that one. That, yeah, that, that was, that that was cool. what I was telling you about that before the show that I wanted to have you just see. Yeah, um, that's a good surprise. And, there. 
Yeah, it's crazy. And so then we keep on looking and over in this area where you had mentioned the circuit um, and of course the dolphin, here you have Tau spelled phonetically T-O-V. Um, and uh, which when you add that up is 53 again, Mary. So we're seeing the truth about Mary here being a parent. Um, we also have, let's see now, when I'm moving on to the actual place label. So when it comes to the lines, there's a whole lot more here um, that I think that if we had a better image, uh, particularly of the text, uh, I think that we have probably potentially a biliteral cipher going on here for sure. Um, but I would really have to be able to study. Like I said, I've only been looking at this map for a, a few weeks. I, I set it aside probably uh, two or three months ago. And uh, and I revisited it for this for this particular episode. Um, and Jason was great enough to kind of join in. So removing all of the lines, I'm going to take a look at the place labels. And what we're going to see up here, this is really kind of cool. So SVE, when we total those in simple cipher, it totals 44, which is Rex. C-I-A Rex in, in the name of, of Sweden here, the way it was spelled. And notice how, you know, the, when you see these, uh, the names of these places separated for no good apparent reason, it's because uh, there are messages here. Uh, for example, uh, if we look at the name Russia, notice how it's R-U-S and then S-I and then A down here above Armenia. Um, when we add up R-V-S, you have 55, which is Francis Bacon in short cipher. And so um, Francis Bacon is I, <laughs> is what it's saying. Um, then we have, let's see, moving on next, looking at my notes, we have... Oh, yeah. T-A-R is 37. F-R-A-N in simple cipher, but it's also Drake in simple cipher. And then, of course, we have the Tau and the symbolic A. You notice how they kind of line up there, uh, Athena and Apollo. If we add the T and A to the T-A-R, we have 57 again, the triple Tau, and which is, of course, Bacon's symbol. If we Note that R-I-A, if we add that up, that's 27, which is the same as I-I-I, the third. So, and Francis was Francis the third. Um, again, it's like, this is just, a lot of this stuff is just kind of mind blowing. And when you, we look at here, see the break there between the space. Yeah. When, when, when I do this kind of work, that's the kind of stuff that really catches my notice um, where um, right here we have two, which is Latin for you. And then in the letters RC. Okay. For the Rosie cross. Um and then what we do is we add up the R-C-H-I-T-O-N. Since there's a space here, we don't include the T and U. Um, we add these up, and that totals 83 in a uh, simple cipher. Now, that is the value of King Francis in, in simple. Uh, it's the value of Stuart in short cipher. And Frotters, as in brothers, in simple cipher as well. Uh, in reverse cipher, these letters total 92, which is bacon in reverse cipher. And lastly, in case cipher, these letters total 161. Um, that's Francis Stewart with the French spelling uh, in simple cipher. Frotters again in K cipher, as well as a simple cipher value of Valois and Julemi, and also um, the, the the value of of another person who's going to remain nameless for the time being. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so moving on down here, notice how Arabia is split here on, on um, the uh, equator. And so what I did here was adding up A-R-A. -A. I mean, these are symbolic letters anyway, but that totals, of course, 19, which again is, you know, 19th um, yeah. prime number, 67, Francis. Um, and B-I-A, I-B-A. T, I be a Tau, I be a Francis is the message here. Um, and that re message keeps repeating all over the map. Um, here in Nubia, uh, this is really cool. I like this one. Um, I, uh, N is 13 in simple cipher. V is 20, so I 33. Um, 
It's like saying I bacon. But what's cool is B I, uh, B is two, I is nine. So 29 is the value of the word hog. <laughs> I, huh. I be a hog. Uh, I thought that was kind of funny. And then right below this, of course, is this backwards seven. Look at that, gang. What's really cool about the backwards seven is, um, and, and he uses backwards S's. He used one on, on uh, Shakespeare, the Shakespeare plaque. He used a backward S as a, as a question mark, but it, it had faded over time and people couldn't see it. But um, the backwards seven, actually, when you count from, you know, 60, the seven is actually over 67, Francis. And seven, of course, is the letter G, which in uh, K cipher is the number 33, which is bacon and symbol cipher. So right here, he's telling us that he drew this map. But Francis Bacon. Um, lastly, for the words, um, looking at Orientalis here, this is just, look how it's divided up by the river. It, it's just kind of, um, it just looks strange. And so what I did here was, um, if we note that there's a space here, but then there's a space between the T and the A again, looking at the values of E N A L I S. Uh, that is again 57, the triple tau. Um, and if we leave out the I S, the value is 44, which is Rex. T is Francis is 44. Francis is Rex. Um, so again, um, that's just a handful of some of the things that. I found, um, going back, I do want to point out, I, I noted the same thing as Jason did here. Uh, if you look at these values here uh, of where these lines cross, this one in particular, which I already mentioned, uh, but once again, they cross here at like 60, that's 67 right there. Um, I just found that to be really, really kind of cool. So there's more there, gang, but uh, I'm uh, going to save that for another time. Um, one of the things that I, I really um, want to do at some point, and, and Jason, I think you're really going to like this, um, is I, I haven't shared with anyone uh, the, the uh, formula that Bacon used for his, his uh, pseudonyms um, his uh, uh, masks, if you will, uh, and and they there is a way to actually check to see if you know he actually used these as as his names, and um, it's really pretty cool. Um, so looking at the messages here, go ahead and jump out. If you have any questions, go ahead and throw them out. Great finds, Jake. Oh, That's thanks, man. Stuff. So, uh, would Drake have known Bacon was using his name? It, um, actually, Jenny, I don't think he was using his name. He was commemorating. Uh, he, he really, um, really looked up and, and, and idolized Sir Francis Drake. Uh, it, it was someone that he, um, you know, really, really uh, idolized. And so I think what he was doing was um, honoring him with the map but at the same time he was also encoding the fact that he was the one who who created the map even yeah. though people know him know of him as a map maker what do you think jason i i noticed uh drake was about 20 years older than bacon right so it's just kind of like you know yeah an idol somebody look up to um when you're not when you're adopted you don't have you know your original family and and yep. so and then I noticed that Drake was uh, knighted into a, a knighthood by Elizabeth. Yep. So it, I wonder what Drake was doing, you know, on both sides or what was going on there. Yeah. Well, you know, he was, um, I really believe that this has to do with, once again, the B symbolism. Um, and, and stay with me on this. I need to see if you can follow my crazy train of thought here. But, um, you know, they honored bees because bees would go out and collect pollen. And there was something very alchemical about collecting pollen and they turn it into honey. Okay. Which is gold for their queen. Um, and 
uh, what Drake was doing was he was a privateer. He was going out and, and stinging the, uh, the the Spanish, right, as a privateer, taking all their silver and gold and bringing it back to his queen. Yeah. Um, and, and so I, I think that that has a, a big part of it. And when you consider um, how the, the ships would tack when they were attacking against um, uh, against the against the wind, you know, they wouldn't go in a straight line like a bee, you know, kind of flies. I, I always kind of thought that that had something to do with that kind of symbolism. But yeah, I uh, see the Spanish king had a bounty for for Drake. So yeah, they called him the dragon. Yeah, they they wanted him. Yep. And yeah, uh, Facebook, you uh, spotted the 37 in the mountains. Very good. Um, Woken one. Always good question. So why would Francis Bacon create so many artworks referring to the same message? Was this done in case Francis, his cover was blown and his works were destroyed and the truth lost to history? Just asking. Uh, it's, it's such a great question. I think so. Um, what I found in the ciphertext of, of Shakespeare's plaque was redundancy. And, and, and Jason, you brought up that word too. Uh, there's so much redundancy of the messages. They yeah. repeat so often. He wanted to make sure they got through eventually. Yeah. What do you think? And it's, a, it's we're maybe with today's technology, we're able to hold some of this in the palm of our hand where we don't have to go to some hidden library and dig these books up, but yeah. we're, we're finding all these messages at once. And um, I, I wish I could share the messages I have on the Shakespeare plaque right now, but I can't, but all these messages are used over and over and over again on all of these works. Um, and yeah. it's like, he just wanted somebody to remember at some point, um, but we're, we're breaking these codes down very fast right now. Yeah. They, they did. And the thing was, um, it's because they've been there this whole time and there's so many of them. He was so prolific and he wasn't alone. I mean, uh, Anthony Bacon was helping him uh, produce those, uh, uh, one person who keeps coming up, who was definitely deeply involved was Sir Walter Raleigh. Uh, at some point I really want to uh, dig into, uh, the information I found on him and, and share that out. But it's, I, I, that's something that I definitely want to make sure I have all of my uh, ducks in a row for. Um, and yeah, uh, it was coded just like the first folio. One person asked, uh, Tom, asking a great question. Uh, maybe I missed this part. How did they manage to, to make these pictorial messages so accurate and not totally mark up the entire map? Uh <laughs> Great you know, question. some of that map seems very disproportionate. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, but I, I don't think there's if you're just sailing around the world and you're you're trying to draw a map of it, uh, you know, you are limited with time. And and so I, there could have been another advantage of saying that a certain landmass was small when it was bigger, um, when it was bigger, but it was small and you wanted people to know it was smaller. But he certainly made it work out for this photo um using the meridian lines and using his angles so i think there was some manipulation there in that process uh wow. to get all of his messages out bless you oh for sure yeah i i agree 100 percent, jason um and and what i what i like about the way you do um your analysis is you know you actually show us how he planned out where he was going to place things, right? Mm -hmm. By by finding the, finding the very center of the image, for example, yeah. uh, figuring out where the quadrants are, um, and then you know drawing the, his 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 angles, you know where the, where he wants significant things to be. And so, uh, such a great question, Tom. Uh, but yeah, it's like that's how he did it. It is is the way Jason demonstrated how he planned it out. Um, and then, of course, you know he has to massage things so that they. Uh, uh, fit the way he wants yeah all right so do you think the parchment with the two letters v i or w i pulled from the money pit area on oak island is associated with francis bacon in your opinion um in my opinion uh i have been looking at bacon's handwriting so much that when i first when they showed it again um uh in this season and and showed that image of it um yeah, it, it looks like his handwriting to me. I don't know. I mean, I, I would really want to be able to uh, see it closely um, longer than it's actually been on uh, the screen on the show. Uh, but 
at, at first glance, I I would say it looks very familiar. The handle yeah. was familiar. Yeah, I'm not certain on the 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 parchment paper because I just don't know. Uh, but I I agree with what you're saying and looking at it so much and the timbers that they're pulling out of that money pit area are now falling in a timeline right of time. these voyages. So th the other thing I have with that wood is some of the dates are earlier. And if a ship was sailed over and then taken apart and used for lumber, then that ship could have been much older and the timbers would have been older um, to produce earlier numbers. So yep. it's all fallen into place. Yeah, for sure. It sure is. Uh, so many great, this is my, one of my favorite questions that we get. Uh, why, 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 and why? <laughs> um, and what is Francis doing all of this for? Um, well, in, in my, in my opinion, um, he wanted the truth to eventually come out someday. Um, he wanted people to know that, you know, um, who, who, what his birthright truly was, first of all, um, he wanted people to know that um, he was responsible for a lot of things that he didn't take credit for, uh, you know, in, in, in an open way, you know, to have, you know, orchestrated the writings of, of William Shakespeare uh, with the help of Ben Johnson, Anthony Bacon and, and, and others uh, in his circle. And, um, you know, to not take credit and allows he allows the actor uh, William Shakespeare uh, to take credit for it and brag about it. Uh, meanwhile, everyone knew that it wasn't him at all. So, you know, things like that. I, I think that he wanted eventually someday someone to basically point out everything he had done. Yeah. Who, who he yeah. really was. And his lineage. Yeah. Yep. So let's see. Um, uh, when you look at older works, how do you determine what cipher might have been used? My favorite painting, you know which one, Jake. <laughs> there are many angles used. Yeah. Um, uh, I know the one you're talking about. <laughs> it's funny. I don't even see your name, but I know I know who this is. Um, yeah. You know what? Um, it, 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 it's not what determines what cipher is used. It, 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 he used them all. As, as, as a, a system, okay? Uh, they, they interact with each other. And, and so he would use, you know, a uh, simple cipher to produce a number that means something in K cipher and, and vice versa, those kinds of things. Um, so uh, that's what determines it. Um, oh, thanks, Daniel. So when I look at older works, um, and particularly your, your favorite painting and the angles used in that, um, the, the, the say we, we take uh, Poussin's uh, Shepherds of Arcadia, okay? And, and you, you look at um, all of the work, great work that um, uh, Chris Morford uh, has done on it, for example. Um, and you start really looking at those kinds of angles and how that works. In my mind, what that tells me is that Poussin was, was sending the message that he knew about Bacon. And so the, the, in the Fama Fraternitatis and in the Confessio, uh, it states explicitly that um, the only people who will ever become RC are the ones who know, who, who learn the secrets. They're not supposed to share them openly the way I've been doing. <laughs> what they're supposed to do is, is actually create some form of art or, or literature with those themes being displayed. And um, I think that's what Poussin was doing. He was sending out at the signal of like, hey, I, I, I figured out the message. Um, I know who he was and, and what he did. So, yeah. Um, Doug, what, do, what do you think, Jason? Well, with that painting um, and looking at other Poussin work, uh, he was an amazing artist. And I, I don't know enough about art to speak uh, highly enough about it. But there's a flow with all of his other paintings. Yep. And then all of a sudden you have this brick wall with Et and Arcadia Ego. And I feel like that Bacon had the canvas first. He put something on it in angles and Poussin painted over the top of it. That's what I feel like. I, oh, well. Wow. I, I would. I hadn't because, even thought of that. That's, that's a really cool theory, Jason. I hadn't even thought of that. That's cool. That, that's what I see because it's, it does not have the beauty 
that his other artwork does um, that comes to life. Right. Um, when I see this second rendition, it's very angular. And yeah. I've talked about it in our group. And uh, it's I, I would like to present that another another show. We could talk about that painting and some other ones. Um, that would be amazing. Um, and I can yeah. show you some of these same <laughs> messages inside yeah. that artwork. Um, yeah. It's exciting. Yeah, in particular, have you looked at um, uh, the Bacchus uh, portrait that, that shows, you know, the the uh, basically it's it's uh, Bacchus on on parade where they have all of these mythological figures, um, and you know, one of them is of course is Hercules uh, stealing a, a, the uh, Delphic uh, tripod, um, and, and it's a really really cool image, and the angles in that I you would it's it's cool it, it, we, we i think we should definitely dig into that at some point we'll, at a future show you and i yeah yeah a lot of fun. yeah I'm, I'm thinking of constellations too as you talk about that with some yeah. hercules constellations yeah so i need to see that one for sure that, that's a good one um yes oh great comment symbolism and names jake drake's flagship the pelican which drake later renamed the golden hind uh, weighed only about 100 tons. It seemed little enough with which to undertake a venture into the domain of the most powerful monarch and empire in the world. Of all the possible images, the Jewish-Portuguese community in Amsterdam chose none other than the bleeding pelican as its symbol. In Christian art, the pelican is symbolic and metaphoric uh, with a specific reference to both uh, self-sacrifice. Yes, um, and not only that, uh, the pelican... Um, also, and you, you referenced, uh, the, um, uh, about, about the blood, uh, that was a belief that pelicans actually would feed their babies, their own blood out of their mouth. And, um, there, there are multiple references to that, or at least two different references in, in Shakespeare, uh, plays. Uh, one of them was, uh, in, in, uh, Hamlet, uh, where they reference that. Oh, uh, James McPherson put you up on screen uh, i'm a new follower and have been enjoying watching your presentations i have a particular interest in oak island my answer is settled in nova scotia in 1752 that's really cool james good to know thanks yeah. for joining us thanks for joining us we yeah, researched that 1752 and and why they went there you know because a lot of the scots were headed over there after the or during the jacobite rising so yep. there's some history there yeah absolutely such a good, such a good question. Good observation. Uh, Tom Burns, uh, did the various ciphers get introduced over time and di or did he start using them all at once? Um, from what I understand, Tom, uh, he created his biliteral cipher when he was 16 years old. Uh, and then by the time, um, you know, all of a sudden I see him producing, you know, for example, this map, uh, this was one of his, um, early creations. Uh, as well as uh, his work um, as Nicholas Hilliard, for example. Um, <clears throat> I think that he created them all at once to work together. Because uh, what I've seen in everything he's done is each of those ciphers actually work in conjunction with one another in every image I've, I've studied that I believe was you know produced by him. So great question. I, I, I think that um, they, they weren't introduced over time. I think he just he created the system full-fledged and then you started using it. I don't know. What, what were your thoughts, Jason? Um, I, if I had time to go through my notes, I would. There was a couple of words I came across that were the same in forward and reverse or forward yep. and K. And then there was one word that literally meant the same thing in all three. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I think he used yeah, it yeah. continuously um, and had to, but... Yeah, yeah, for sure. Great question. Great question. Um, <laughs> yeah, Daniel, um, because I'm revealing the secrets, I'm out of the club. I, 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 guess, I guess I should have uh, work, worked these themes into uh, my, my, my next novel or something instead. Uh, but oh, um, and again, uh, another great comment, John Edwards. Um, the wood analysis from the last show showed the timeline of approximately 1450 to 1650. Yes, we talked about this on the Chris of Oak Island and beyond live stream. 
That, my friend, is the age of exploration of Queen Elizabeth's court. Absolutely, John. Um, you know, that is, you know, really what was going on there. Uh, you have a lot of major players uh, coming out of uh, Elizabeth's court. You had, like I said, Bacon. Uh, you have the Bacon brothers. You have uh, Sir Walter Raleigh. You have um, uh, Robert Devereux, second Earl of Essex, her her secret son. Um and, and, you know, they, these guys were, you know, leading the charge at the, um, the Battle of Cadiz, for example. Um, and so, yeah, I agree. Very true. Let's see, looking over our comments. Yep, and that's the rest of the message that got cut up because it was a long one. In Christian art, the pelican is symbolic and metaphoric with a specific reference to both the self-sacrifice of Jesus and the idea of resurrection. Yep. Great comment. Great comments. We have some pretty, pretty amazing viewers here tonight, Jason. If Drake uh, would have made it all the way to California, like he said he did, uh, he would have seen a lot of pelicans. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? It's funny. Um, I didn't even go over um, uh, that part of the map, but uh, where it says New Albion and Española, mm -hmm. uh, those are all... The, there are a bunch of uh, cipher signatures of, of um, Albion uh, actually equals Drake. Um, and, wow. and then it, and then reverse, it equals Bacon. I mean, it's it, it's it's really pretty cool the way he, he put all that together. For yeah, sure. It's a beautiful area. I've been through there. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, yeah, um, there was a rumor that Drake did make it to California. Um, in fact, uh, there, they have found a wall that actually spans a great distance in the area where allegedly um, uh, Drake had made landfall. And they believe that it may have been, you know, a construction by uh, he and his men. Uh, really kind of an interesting story there. Uh, and it, and, you know, according to his, his own journals and so on that, you know, they were, they were there in, in either California or possibly Washington. And uh, Chris Dona and I did that show about uh, Drake's plaque. Uh, where he uh, come to find out it was uh, supposed to be a hoax, and they proved that the uh, allegedly proved that uh, people don't like it when I when I when I say that they proved it uh, that uh, the brass that it was made of was actually mo a modern construction and and of modern um, uh, quality. So um, my theory has always been that um, if the plaque was faked, it was based upon an original because there are so many and jason i you and i have talked about this i think in the past there are so many indicators on that plaque that it was created by francis bacon uh sailing with sir francis drake or he he made it ahead of time and drake took it with him um because there, there there's so many so many cipher there's so much cipher evidence on that plaque that uh even if it even if it was fake um i, I think it was a a, a copy of, of an original what do you think jason I, I say get it out let's put some modern technology on it and test it again um i think it's information that they don't want to hear yeah absolutely absolutely um and so we have another question here i'm looking at um so the the Hundiest map of 1589 inset depicts Drake's encampment at New Albion, Portus Novus Albionus. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Um, what does circuli mean? The eyes and upside down seven. Uh, yeah, did, did anyone else notice that? Did you notice that, Jason? No. Let's look at it. Um, so um, let me see if I can just pull it up. A circular, I'm sorry, I, I guess I should answer the question. Um, it, it means circle. That's what it means. Um, and so let's take a look at it. I'll, I still have my picture up here, I think. Oh, nope, I closed it out. Okay. Let's do this. And where did I put it? There we go. Boom. So I guess I'm 
Is this where you mean it is up here? Can you see the uh, comments, Jason? Maybe you can circuit it. But he's saying uh, circuitly C-I-R-C-U. Oh, right there. Okay. Right there. Oh, good catch. Yeah, that... that um, oh, yeah. Notice how... And, and again, mm -hmm. this, these are the kinds of things we look for. What a great catch. Yeah. Uh, because what that is that is, on the meridian line there, too? That's... It, right, right. That 60. So it's almost saying 67. There's the 60 and there's the 7. 7 right there. Yeah. And, and notice that here's another L that yeah. is a seven, say down seven right below it. So we have 67 there. Wow, that's cool. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think he's talking about uh, circumnavigating the world. But, um, yeah, this indicates to me, well, let me do this quick. I have my f calculator right here handy. So three plus nine plus 17 notice the rc at the center of it plus three, yeah. 20 plus nine and let's um if l is 11 so it totals 72 uh which is a significant um bacon number i think that's um is that king bacon in simple i think something like that um, I got it right here. So let's see. It's Rex Francis Bacon in short cipher. And yeah, I was right. King Bacon and simple. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. So that's, that's pretty cool. RC Rose Cross. That's right. Yeah. Great catch. Great catch. Yeah. Uh, right, right there. there live. Cool. Yep. That's how we do it. Um, and so, again, um, okay, Jake, the official account was Drake made multiple stops on his way toward the tip of Africa, eventually rounded the Cape of Good Hope, yep, and reached uh, Sierra Leone by July 22nd, 1580. On September 26th, the Golden Hind sailed into Plymouth with Drake and 59 remaining crew aboard, along with rich cargo of spices and captured Spanish treasures. The Queen's half share of the cargo surpassed the rest of the Crown's income for the entire year. Wow. Holy cow. Very cool. Very cool. Um, and so, you know, this is why it's when um, that last message you and I found uh, that we're hopefully we'll share with people <laughs> sometime soon about Sir Francis Drake is I, I think that that is really, really important. And if we can use that and refine um, an X on the map for uh, a few certain someones, uh, that would be really cool. So, all right, gang, great questions, great comments as usual. Uh, Jason, I want to be respectful of your time, man. Uh, I appreciate you coming on so much. Uh, this was just so much fun because um, coming at it from, uh, you know, the, <laughs> forgive the pun, different angles like we do, um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're still able to find the repeating messages. And um, I don't know, it didn't just, it just it, it's so cool to be able to validate each other's information and, and and the messages that are that keep coming out of it. It's just really cool. Yeah. Thanks um, for the invite, Jake. It was a lot of fun. That was a blast. Um, so let's see, we have uh explain after the voyages that the Queen ordered all written accounts of Drake's voyage to be considered classified information and its participants sworn to silence and pain of death. Her aim was to keep Drake's activities um, away from the eyes of rivals. And that was a rival Spain, uh, John Edwards. Thanks, John. Great, great information as usual. Uh, Jason, awesome presentation. Thanks for doing this. Uh, this was this is so much fun. Um, well, and and like you said, you know, we, uh, before the show, we I, I think we need to plan a few more of these because uh, it, it just keeps getting better and better. And like you said, the hits just keep on coming. I mean, we <laughs> the more yeah. we dig into the stuff, it's just all of a sudden, boom, it's right there. Yeah, it's very cool. Very cool. Yeah, a lot of fun. Right. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, take care. Um, all right, everyone, uh, we're going to sign off here and um, want to say thanks for for joining us. Uh, that was a lot of fun. What, as usual, uh, Jason has such awesome information. Uh, had a lot of fun with that tonight. So, everyone, take care, stay safe, and uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, gang. Bye now. <laughs>